Hello, this is Beth Bennett with Danville Church Based Tutorial Program. I'm coming to you today with a lesson that can be used for kindergarten, first, and second grade. And we're going to be reading one of my favorite authors again today, Mo Willems. This story is called Waiting is Not Easy. And waiting is not easy. We all know that. We really want to do something that's hard to wait. And as you're reading today, I want you to think about what is something that you had to wait for? Because afterwards, we're going to be doing a writing activity about um, something that you had to wait for one time. Waiting is not easy. Look at Gerald's face. Is he having a hard time? Gerald! I have a surprise for you. Yay, what is it? The surprise is a surprise. Oh. Is it big? Yes. Is it pretty? Yes. Can we share it? Yes. Look at him, he's getting so excited. I cannot wait. You will have to. Wait? What? Why? The surprise is not here yet. So will I have to wait for it? Yes. Oh, well, if I have to wait, I will wait. Look at his face. Does he want to wait? No, he wants a surprise right now. I am waiting. Waiting is not easy. Piggy, I want to see my your surprise now. I am sorry, Gerald, but we must wait. Look at Piggy. He said, oof. I am done waiting. I do not think your surprise is worth all this waiting. I will not wait anymore. Okay, I will wait some more. It will be worth it. Piggy, we have waited too long. It is getting dark. It is getting darker. Soon we will not be able to see each other. Soon we will not be able to see anything. We have waited, wasted the whole day. Well, um, we have waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. And for what? 
for that. Look at the beautiful sky. This was worth the wait. I know. Tomorrow morning, I want to show you the sunrise. I cannot wait. So in that book, Jarrett was having a really hard time waiting, but once he did wait and he got to his surprise, he was so excited and knew that it was worth waiting for. So let's think about some things that you had to wait for, or something that you had to wait for one time, but, but then when you got to it, it was so exciting and you were happy about it. Can we think about something? One thing that I'm having a hard time waiting for right now is I'm having a hard time waiting to get back in school with you all. So I'm going to put as an idea, get back into school. I'm also having a hard time waiting to get my hair cut because I haven't had my hair cut in two months. So. that sometimes it's hard to wait to open presents. We'll put that. Or if there's something that you really, really want it and your mom or dad said they were going to get it for you or a grandparent. So waiting for maybe a new bike or a new doll or a new pair of shoes. All of those are things that you might just like Gerald, have a really hard time waiting for. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some ideas that we have here, and I know you have some ideas too, and we're going to create a comic strip of you waiting for something, but then finally getting it. So let's look at an example of a comic strip. So here's an example of what a comic, comic strip looks like. It, this one has four boxes, and it has the characters drawn in it. And usually in a comic strip, you have this here, which is called a speech bubble. And that lets you know it's coming from Gerald, the elephant, so you know that he's talking. So it said, today we are going to make breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Oh, I feel sorry for lunch. But you are going to make a comic script today about waiting for something. So maybe if you were waiting for a new pair of shoes, this picture could be a picture of you and your mom. And you could be asking her for the shoes. And then you could be looking up the shoes in, online or in the store in another picture. And you could be sitting on the steps waiting, waiting, waiting. And then finally, in the last strip, you might actually get your new bike. I mean, new pair of shoes. It could be a new bike, too. So what I need you to do is get out a piece of paper. And you can pause the video if you need to. And all you have to do to make your own comic strip is to draw four large squares or rectangles. And then you're going to draw four pictures of yourself waiting for something and draw um, speech bubbles to tell me what you're thinking. All right, for our, our Piggy and Gerald math activity today, we are going to be graphing this picture. So, we're going to look at this picture, and then we're going to go over to our graph. So, if you see, our graph has Gerald. Oops, let me go back. Let's do it like this. has Gerald and Piggy and a little elephant. Some, 
you know, or maybe that's Gerald and Piggy in a car. That's what that is. So we're going to see how many Geralds are in the picture. So let's go back to the picture. Okay, I want you to go first. I want you to count all the Geralds and tell me how many Geralds there are. Okay, let's see. I see one, two, three Geralds. So we're going to go back over to our graph and find Gerald. And then we have to go up to the three. So one, two, three. That's where we stop at. So let's shade in up to the number three for Gerald. Great job. All right, let's go back to our picture and see how many piggies we have. You count first. All right, let's count together. One, two, three, four, five. Did you get five piggies? Let's go and find five. So here's Piggy. We go up one, two, three, four, five. You can see the number five right there. So let's shade in up to five because we have five piggies in our picture. And then our last one is Piggy and Gerald in a car. Let's go back to our picture. We have one, two, three, four Piggy and Gerald's in the car. So here we go to our picture. One, two, three, four. Let's shade in. And now our graph is complete. To extend this graphing activity, try making a graph at home on your own. You could draw pictures at the bottom and put numbers up the top like this, or you could put your numbers along the bottom and the colors up top. So for example, if you wanted to make a graph like this, you could ask your people that live in the house with you, or if you want to call grandparents or friends on the phone and ask them what their favorite color is. And then this person had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people that their favorite color was red. You could create this graph at home and fill in how many people have the favorite color blue or yellow or green. Other ideas for graphing is if you have some M&Ms, you could open a pack of M&Ms and see how many colors, like how many color yellow M&Ms are in there, or how many color reds. Same thing with a pack of Skittles. I know I still have this leftover from Easter. Um, and in my house, we always have packs of gummies. So that's another thing that you could open and you say like how many yellow gummies are in this one. Or depending on what it is, you could say how many of the yellow Pokemons or how many of the different color Pokemons are in there and create a graph about that. You could also create a, a graph about favorite sports. You could ask people in your household, what's your favorite sport? Some might say basketball. Some might say football or baseball, soccer. And you could create a graph about that. So make sure that you continue this forward and at least create one graph at home. I want to thank you for joining me today. We did uh, lessons with our Mo Willems book, Waiting is Not Easy and a writing activity with a comic strip, and we also created a graph from the book Mo Willems. Both of these activities can be done with grades kindergarten, first, or second. As always, thank you to our um, contributors, United Way, and the Community Foundation.